Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Kate May Modern Day Mystic. We are entering into the Pisces energy, lovely Pisces, new moon in Pisces today, 13th of March. So what does that mean? Well, with every new moon, it's all about new beginnings, new ideas, new ways of thinking. And Pisces is a very much dreamy. So it's about dreaming up new ways to do things and new magical things there. Great time for um, manifestation, from making your dreams into a reality. The Pisces energy is asking you to dream, to dream big, dream up new beginnings, to trust your intuition um, and very much pay, pay attention to your dreams. Now will be a fantastic time to start a dream diary. Turning your dreams into a reality, using that law of attraction uh, and sort of and the strong cosmic energy, cosmic energy of the Neptune influence there, which can be to do with um, illusions and delusions. But we've got the chance to spin that and manifest it into a positive reality there. So the new moon is also about our shadow side, our hidden side, what we've been hiding, our fears, our secrets and things that maybe we don't want to admit to ourselves or to others. Great time to be liber liberated from that there. This new moon, we can literally start making our destiny a lot more clearer. We can make our pathway and how we want to live our life a bit more clearer there. We've got Neptune and Venus uh, conjunct with the Sun and Moon. Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, so the real dreamy combo there. Venus is full of love, art, seeing the beauty of things. Uh, so conjunct, the energy is likely, likely to be quite dreamy, quite romantic. Could be glamorous with that Venus and full of ideas. So you could be thinking, you know, I want to I wanna make a, a new wardrobe for myself. I want to be doing my hair a bit different. I know it's a bit awkward to do that in lockdown at the moment but you could be thinking about it dreaming it all up there the new moon's energy here uh, in pisces is great for going within so really getting into your mystical side your subconscious side and maybe look at joining things on a spiritual level so you could have had some epiphanies you could have had some awakenings you know your dreams will really start to, to sort of confirm that a lot more but um, you might be looking to join a group or a circle to do with spiritual things or even just getting your cards out. Now, we can't get them out with our friends properly at the moment, but you could maybe be looking at doing some joint uh, Zoom things or online things, bringing that spiritual connection a bit stronger there. Or maybe planning, actually, when we go back into the real world, I'm going to join this circle, I'm going to learn the tarot cards, I'm going to get my crystals out. It's a really good time for being creative as well. I, for one, I, I'm not a massively creative person, um, or I didn't think I was, but I've created so many different things. Not only did I have my own deck published last year, I'm now creating another couple of different decks, more flashcards to do with tarot. I'm really getting into the crystals, but and I've got so used to Canva. Flipping love Canva, who'd have thought it? So I'm really getting into the creative juices there, and I'm sure that's this new, this Piscean energy that's coming in there with that creative thing, creative energy. So ask yourself, how can you bring your creative energy to light? Um, you know, might be particularly in the beauty in industry or your art, you could be really getting down to art. And that's why I thought I was never creative because I can't even draw a stick man. But on Canva, I can create amazing things. Ask, so ask yourself how you can bring your creative influences to the fore there. Think about what you're imagining you know, positive or negative thoughts come in here. So is it benefiting you? Think about, are your thoughts benefiting you? Is this, is there a fear that's not benefiting or is there a jealousy or something that you've been um, hid, hiding away that's just gnawing away at you and, and eating away at you? Is it serving you? Because if it isn't, now's the time to release that fear, surrender to it there. Face your fear, look at your shadow side of things and look at what you've been hiding, maybe things you don't want to share with yourself or you'll share to others. When you get in touch with your shadow side, it's so liberating, so liberating and so many things don't piss you off as much as what they may have done before. So it's a really good time to get in, in touch with that. Pisces moon energy is a great time to heal, particularly emotionally. So um, looking at your old wounds, things from the past that you might still be carrying forward, past influences, maybe those hidden fears, 
anything that is emotionally draining, now is a great time for emotional healing there. So tap in and, and tune into to what is it from the past that you're still holding on to. And now's the time to start taking some responsibility, taking some action and healing from that there. For me, Pisces sits in my second house, so I will be focusing on that with my finances and my values, that's what the second house there represents. If you're unsure of your second house, you can just Google um, free astrology charts and you can put your details in and you'll find out where it is. But I do think it's really important to find out what house Neptune sits in, what house the moon sits in and what house Pisces sits in at the moment because that's all going to be strong influences around you on a personal level there. So um, things I like to do on a new moon is obviously I have a lovely altar, so I'll be creating, I might take a photo of that later, I'll be creating my altar with some tarot cards, although I won't take a photo of everything because I do like to keep my power a little bit secret. Um, but I'll be using particular tarot cards, obviously the moon tarot card will be one of them. I'll be using amethyst because I love amethyst connecting with the moon and Piscean energy there. I shall be using things that I want to make um, my intent for. So things I want to create of the new abundance coming in and what I want to work on that new Pisces moon energy. I should be using objects, anything there, anything there um, to build my altar and build that energy. And then this evening in that lovely new moon's energy, I will sit out there with my little prayers of intent and whatever I'm going to do. I like to just do it on the hop there so I don't have it too planned there. So um, think about think about creating a little altar for you, a little new moon altar. I think it's great, new moon and full moons to do that. So the tarot card associated with the Pisces for me is the moon. The moon card is full of illusions and delusions and, and higher conscious thoughts. It's the card of subconscious feelings um, and where sometimes you could feel overwhelmed. Things that might be brought to light within that or emotions that could come, come out of hiding there. Um, it's a card of uh, sort of unseen things going on at the moment. So you could find that things, you know, although we're not in a full moon, there could still be that unseen feeling there that's, that's rising to surface for you to deal with. But it's exciting. It's lovely. It's a very, very warm and gentle and loving vibration, this one, particularly with that Venus conjunction energy within it as well there. So I have created a little tarot spread for you. Um, one of the first cards that you could pull, one of the first spreads, one of the first cards, is what steps, so first of all, I always start off with what is the Pisces energy, so whatever moon it is. So what is the Pisces energy around you at the moment? So I think we should do this. Shall we do this? Let's have a little, let's have a little look. I'm gonna use the Chakra Wisdom cards today. So let's have a look at the Pisces Generally, this is a very, very general vibe for the world. Oh, what is the Pisces energy? It is the Three of Cups. That's the card that I've picked, the Three of Cups. So the Pisces energy is slightly more fun. That Venus really comes in handy there. It's a bit more fun, a bit more friendship there, collaboration perhaps with friendships or looking to rejoice friendships. Now, we know that we've got the lockdown in a lot of places, but we're talking about coming out of it. So there could be some more plans or just connecting with friends a bit more on social media or maybe moving towards meeting one outside a bit more as the weather picks up for a lot of us. So um, the Pisces energy around us is more about celebrations, more about freedom, more about fun. The next, um, the next position I've got is what steps do you need to take to make your dreams a reality? What steps do we need to take to make our dreams a reality? Oh, it's the Six of Cups. Now, the Six of Cups is very much around nostalgia. It's a perfect card for this, this position. Nostalgia, healing from the past, remembering happy times. You know, even if we've got negative memories of the past, this is about healing. So what steps do you need to take to make your dreams a reality? It's really about forgiving yourself, forgiving others, accepting what a situation is so that you can move on from it. You may be bringing up something from the past to help you make that a reality. So it could be an idea that you had a long time ago that you're now ready to start moving forward with it. It could be a person that you from the past that's coming back into your life. There's a past connection here, but also very much a, friend, a family and a healing connection of the past. So what steps do you need to take to make your dreams a reality? Heal from the past, bring energy in from the past to, get, to help you move forward there. And it's definitely a thinking positive card, thinking that you can do it. 
What can you do to help you remember your dreams? That's the next one. What can you do to help you remember your dreams? The hanged woman in this particular deck, the hanged woman. Now, this is interesting because this is a card of contemplation, reflection, and just kind of hanging around and being in that space. I always find that to help remember dreams, that you go right within that dream. When you're in it, you can sort of train yourself to be in it and be in that moment. And that's what this card is talking about, pausing, being in that moment. And gradually, you can start to then not necessarily control your dreams, not that I'm a control freak, but gradually you'll start to pinpoint parts of the dream that you'll need to on your subconscious to remember. And you can go with your feelings. You may not remember the whole dream, but you could just remember, I know in that part of the dream, because I went within it, that it felt good. It, it was all gonna be all right. And when you awake, you may not remember the entire dream, but you'll remember that feeling of, do you know what, it's all gonna be all right. As you can develop a bit more, as you understand how to do that a little bit more, you can then start to go back into psychotherapy, reflection of it, and be the objects that really stand out to you. So it could be, I had a dream the other week and it was a tomato ketchup bottle, really stood out to me. So I literally became the tomato ketchup bottle and got a whole new meaning for it. So you can go back in, this card is a card of reflection, so that's how you can go in and remember your dreams. Be in the moment, contemplate, but also surrender. Just let yourself go. Let yourself be in that dream. Don't be afraid of what's gonna happen. It's only a dream. But with that little bit of um, having to be in the dream and be in the moment, you can certainly pick up a lot more of the energy's vibrations, but surrendering to yourself and letting yourself get deep in that dream. How can you embrace your creative side? How can, you, how can we embrace our creative side? Let's have a look. The four of coins comes up here, four of coins. How can we embrace our creative side? Now, this is a card of complete opposite of being creative and embracing on one hand. It's a card of being restricted and controlled and holding everything together. But this card says that if you do that too much, then you're blocking yourself. So how can we uh, embrace our creative side? This card is saying, let us flow out. Don't be so blocked that you can't move. Don't be so blocked that you're overwhelmed with things and you can't f think freely. Give yourself a little bit of a gap. Let a flow come in and out, you know, or doing everything in moderation. So if you find that you are blocked in your creative side, look in your life where you are literally blocked, where you're holding everything together too much, and then give yourself a bit of a gap you know, bring that barrier down a little bit and then that gap is your chance to be able to create something to give you that energy flow there. How can, sorry, now what's the next one? What are you being disillusioned with now? What are we being disillusioned with? What are we being disillusioned with? Oh, the Ace of Cups. Now that's interesting. The Ace of Cups is what we are being disillusioned with. Now this is romance, this is love, this is creative energy, this is everything we really want, but there is a little bit of delusion, obviously, in this position. Now it could be that Venus-Neptune um, conjunct link that's coming in there, that actually our dreams may be way, way over the top there, or we could be deluded with things, that we, we are kind of seeing things through rose-tinted glasses at the moment, so we're not being um, practical with it as well. So really this card, it says that you could be over disillusioned, thinking that everything is rosy when maybe it isn't quite so much. So although that Pisces energy is about dreaming and manifesting, also remember to keep it a little bit grounded. You know, is your ex really gonna come back to you after he's been gone five years, is happily married and enjoying a life elsewhere, but somewhere your, a psychic told you 10 years ago that he would come back into your life you're hanging on to that and it's probably going to be deluded there. The psychic could be wrong. How about that? They could have been wrong. Or maybe circumstances have changed. So think about your dreams and reality there. Think about practical things. I always think it's best to actually concentrate on yourself and not worry about manifesting things where other people are involved because you've got a lot more control around yourself and what you want to do. Don't worry about bringing them in. Yes, you might want them coming back, but do you know what? Focus on your needs first. Focus on yourself first. So bring that reality back down a step to you. Think about how you can love yourself again, what you're worth. And when you start bringing in that energy around you, you're going to attract Mr. or Mrs. Wright to you anyway. 
So have a little think about um, creating the, the true dreams or the true reality to yourself there because you could be disillusioned thinking that they're coming back and, and really they're not going to come back. You know, you might need to have a bit of a wake up call with that, but start with you there. And the new moon's mystic message, our new moon's mystic message is the princess of cups. Very interesting actually, because it's so similar to the ace of cups, the princess of cups, so similar. But the ace of cups was asking us to be aware of our disillusions and this is saying what our message is. So when we can be a bit more practical or when we realize the difference between what really is just a fantasy but what could be a reality, when we realize the difference between the two, the potential is massive. You really can make massive, massive um, steps forward in creating that life that you want. But like I said, don't worry about bringing someone else into that. Just focus on yourself. And then when your energy is all in a line, you will bring in the people that you're meant to there. You know, if people aren't meant to be in your life, don't fight that. Just let that go. And if they're meant to come back, they will come back. But this message is all about possibilities. It is a new idea. It is a new creation. It could be a person who is a Pisces or a, a Cancer or even a Scorpio that could connect around your life with a positive influence there. It's full of hope, full of optimism. But don't forget to get that little um, gap between your real your dreams that are real pie in the sky and your dreams that can make a reality there but full of potential so that is the little um moon new moon tarot spread that i've created if you want to see it again if you want to actually see the format do check out my website www.katemay.co.uk and it is in the moon blogs as well as the write-up of everything that i've said so you can see it there read it all for yourselves take a photo of it print it off do the spread yourself. It'd be really interesting. And I'd love to have your feedback. So if any of you do do that, do do. And if you do do that moon spread, I'd love to have your feedback on that. Let me know how you got on. And if you get stuck in a position, if you get stuck with you don't understand how that card can relate to that question, then let me know and I will interpret it for you there because I can do that with my magic ways. All right, my lovelies, have a lovely new moon in Pisces. Have a lovely new moon, bring in all that magical energy around you. And I will see you again soon. Take care, bye.